Hi, Dave here from Megapoints Controllers. On this video, I want to introduce you to a new product of ours, the Auto Signal or Auto Signal Controller. You may have seen this on Pete Waterman's layout at Chester Cathedral. It's a 74 foot layout and it uses signaling extensively. And we developed this with his layout in mind. But we didn't just want to make a board that drove signals, we wanted to make a board that brought something new. So um, what I'll do on this video is I'm just going to introduce you to the basic features and what this board can do and why it might be useful to you. And um, in a subsequent video, we'll go to other layouts and we'll see it installed in use and doing its thing. So here is the basic auto signal board. You can get an idea of size if I whoop, hold one in my hand. First thing you'll note on this board is it has this 12 way block connector here. And this is the connector that generally you'll wire your signals into. And it's on a plug. So if you have to take the board off or want to relocate it, you don't have to disconnect all the wiring to your layout. In fact, if I take a signal I have here and connect it, let's widen up shot. All I have to do is plug it in. And here I have a signal and a feather connected. There we go, you can almost see it now. So I've plugged in a signal and a feather. Now this board is designed to work with 12 volt LEDs. So your LEDs um, in your signals will probably have been supplied with a resistor like this. Make sure they're in place. And the green version of this board is a common negative or common cathode. And it says so here, common negative. Right, let me get right back into the board again. Let's just go over some of the basic connections. Here we have the connections for the feather, double yellow, green, yellow, red and ground for the common negative signal. Here we have a feather switch, a danger switch and the ground for the switches. And here we have some terminals that would connect to the next signal down the line or the previous signal up the line, as well as a divergent route connector. But you probably won't use these because we've also included uh, sockets and on the sockets you can just plug in other boards and they'll all start communicating. So the other connectors on the board are first of all we have a test switch. If you press the test switch it sets danger for two seconds. It has connectors here for a block occupancy connector and typically that would be uh, a current sensor as used in DCC but if you really wanted to you could connect an infrared sensor as well and we've included power on the plug so that you can just plug in an infrared though it wouldn't be as good as a block detection system because the infrared only measures presence. The board can drive a relay and by plugging a relay in here you can have a relay hooked up so that danger will be when danger is set it will drive the relay and this relay can be used to operate an automatic brake controller and we'll show you that working in a later video. We also have here connection for a point position indicator. And if you use this, uh, then automatically it's capable of switching the feather on and off. Um, so it's as automatic as possible. Basically fit this to your layout, correctly wire it up to sensors and you don't have to do anything to it. It'll work fully automatically. Now, alongside the power here, we have a previous and a next connector, which connects to the next auto signal going forwards or the previous auto signal that you've just passed. Not only does this serve as a communications wire, but it also distributes power. So instead of having to connect power to every auto signal, you only have to connect it to, the, to any one in the chain and the rest will all take power through the built-in connectors. And finally, we have a personality jumper here. So it has a couple of special modes and the normal aspect selection. So it can do two aspect, three aspect, and the default is four aspect signaling. Originally, our plan was to include special functions for three and four aspect signaling, such as the diverging route. 
but we've worked out how to do that fully automatically. So if you configure and wire up the board with the appropriate sensors, you get that turned on by default. We also have a set of five LEDs here indicating uh, the feather, double yellow, green, yellow and red danger. So the signals are indicated on the board even if they're not connected. So you can see at a glance what the signal controller is doing. What I'll do now is connect the signal controller up to a regulated 12 volt power supply. Apologies if my hands get in the way. Um, it doesn't matter how you connect it because there's a rectifier on board. So the plus and minus can go in either side of the terminals. And if I apply the power now, you'll see the LEDs on board will just cycle through a quick test. There they go. So we have this flashing indicating that the board is running and it's in normal mode. And we have green set. If I press the test button, it'll go to danger and then flip back. So here's a signal connected to the 12 way connector. If I connect that in, you can see here, it's replicating what we're seeing on the board. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach a toggle switch here to the point position indicator. And now when I throw this, you can see the feathers lit as well. Feathers on here, feathers lit here. So as you can see, we can operate parts of this just with a simple toggle switch push button switch or the real power of the system comes when it's connected to other auto signals. So your first question might be if you're new to signaling how do I set yellow? Well you don't because this board can either be at danger or not. So let's look at how you might set a, a yellow or double yellow aspect on this. You can't set it from the board because it wouldn't be valid. To get a yellow or double yellow signal you would have a signal further down the track that is set to danger. So if I take another auto signal board, these cables are included with the, with the auto signal itself. So if I connect this here to the previous and here to the next, can you see this board now has power? So there's power applied to this board. So if I set danger here, then in a four aspect signal, this will set yellow. There it goes. Release, and after a slight delay, it's about one and a half seconds, then it will go back to clear. And if I want a double yellow aspect, then we detach another one. Let's move the camera. There we go. Super smooth camera work, not. Connect it here and plug it into the next here. Again, the board did his little dance to show that the, the board is running and the lights are working. And I've distributed power amongst all of these, even though I've only connected it once. So as the train comes along, it's at danger here. Then it's moving down the track and it will go and trigger this block. And that will show a single yellow. Then as it moves further down, it will hit a double yellow aspect. And I hope you can see here and here we have the double yellow because we're fully replicating the signal here. We have the single yellow on the next signal and then the danger on the next. And having that test button means it's super easy to install and check that it's working. So this is configured in block signaling mode and that's the default mode. That means it requires a block to be monitored and um, it will sense and act appropriately. So the way to make an auto signal automatic is through the block detector. And this connects via a plug and socket into the occupancy switch connector here. And we'll tell you when a train is on track effectively like this. The way to control uh, or indicate a feather instead of using the switch I demonstrated earlier is to use our point position indicator. And that would connect from here to the point position indicator socket so that when the feather is, or when the points are thrown, you'll get a feather indicator on the signal automatically. 
if you choose to use infrared then instead of this you would connect it to the occupancy switch and you can see there's a 5 volt rail there so it will drive this sensor for you as well but you will only get the position sensed whereas the block sensor will tell you the entire block if it's occupied or not which is more prototypical. This little jumper here allows you to configure various personalities. So I'll just disconnect these auto signals for a moment, move this out of the way and we'll change the personality. So obviously we can go two aspect, three aspect and four aspect. By changing the personality jumper to four funk we change the personality of the signal completely. Now the light has stopped flashing because it, it wants to go into a timer mode. So using a timer, you could use the infrared sensor and set a specific amount of time. And as the train goes past, it will cycle through the, uh, the various aspects. So each light represents five seconds, so per aspect. So if I hold it down for a, few, for a second or two, you'll see one, two, three, four, five light, watch. One, two, three. So I've got five lit there, so which means it will hold an aspect for 15 seconds because each one is five. If I want to clear it, press it and release it quickly. So I'll set it now for five seconds. There we go. Now if I take the jumper off this mode and put it back into four aspect, the light is not flashing because it's in timed mode. So if I set danger now, you can see it's holding danger Two seconds will hold danger and then it will start the timer. So after, after five seconds it goes to yellow and after another five seconds it will go to a double yellow and then finally it will go back to green. Now this was designed on Pete's layout to simulate further signalling when a train leaves the scenic section. So on tunnel entrances we have these special timed modes and that's so that suddenly it doesn't go from red to green, which would be illegal. It goes through the various aspects, indicating that there are further blocks. But if you wanted to use it with the infrared sensor, then you could do that and it wouldn't be a problem. To clear this mode, because I really want a flashing light to clear it, all I have to do is reapply the jumper to four funk, blip that button, and now it's back to flashing. There's a comprehensive guide on the website that uh, talks about the auto signaling depth. So I'll show you some of the, the length we've gone to to give you the, the different scenarios. So if we look here, Here's the page that shows you how to hook it up. So everything I've covered here is on this diagram and it talks about how to configure the timer, timer operation and so on, and how to adjust it. This diagram shows you how to hook up the auto signal. So you have your basic auto signal connected to an automatic brake controller if you want automatic braking. What does that do? Well, if the light is at red, the train will automatically cruise to a halt if you have an equipped decoder. Uh, you can set the acceleration, deceleration and the length of distance to cover before the stop happens. So set the leading block to the same for all signals and then you'll have it stop at precisely the same, same place every time. Here you have your point position indicator going to your frog switch or your point blade and that will trigger the logic to switch the feather on automatically. Set your points feather comes on, turn it off, feather goes off. And you have the basic connections to and from your next auto signal. In this part of the user guide, we talk about the various sensors and how they work and how to wire them up. So this is how you wire up the block detector. This talks about here the point position indicator and how to use it. And I've provided a couple of reference diagrams to show various ways or options of wiring up and the benefits of each method if you're using a point position indicator. It starts to get interesting now because this page covers how we do a diverging route. 
If you imagine a chain of signals along this track moving in this direction, opposite track coming this way and then another road along, and you want to go from one to the other, then by simply attaching one wire from this chain to the terminal here, which is labeled next to, don't know if you can see that, hope so, next to, if it sees a signal on that line, it will know to turn on the diverging signal logic. And that works in both three aspect and four aspect mode. Here we have a discussion of each of the modes and an example. So how to wire up four aspect signaling, any number of auto signals ahead and behind. If you have a layout that goes round in a loop or a circle, you can even wire the last auto signal back to the first auto signal and it will work. Just take care when you do that you have these cables the right way round. Don't reverse them because you would introduce a short circuit as the outer two connectors are power. If you do that with our power supply, it just shuts down. No big deal. Here's a specific diagram on how to configure the divergent path signaling for four aspect. How auto signals work for the uh, three funk. And three funk is, it's a bit of fun really. What we did is we introduced a way of getting four aspects from three color lights. So we introduced a yellow flashing. It's not prototypical and we may replace it with something more interesting later on but for now that's how the software works three aspect mode two aspect mode we talk about ways of linking units you can you can link them through the shared three wire cable that i demonstrated or if you really want to you can link them all with their own power rail it's your choice it's flexible and here we have a little section on connecting a relay or and a feather switch so you saw me wiring uh, or showing how I would wire the feather to a point position indicator, but you could just as easily connect it to a micro switch. I hope you'll appreciate there's quite a lot of work gone into the auto signal. It's a very capable board. It does a lot of things. And um, if you still have time, you can go and see it on Pete Waterman's layout at Chester Cathedral or you can see it at the Great Electric Train Show in Milton Keynes in October. I think it's October the 3rd. It'll be there for the weekend. Um, the next video I show you with the auto signal will be it installed on uh, layout and I'll show you um, an installation with automatic brake control configured as trains can chase each other around the track but not hit each other. In the meantime, you can download the user guide from the website and you can see this video and other videos in the auto signal series. Under the shop page, we have a signals category now where you can see all the accessories I talked about in one place. And you can see the video where Pete Waterman talks about how the color light signals um, really changed the way his layout operated and how it looks to the public. It is quite a phenomenal layout and I've had a privilege to supply and design this product for that installation. See you at the next time. Thanks for watching.